Welcome back. Today we're going to be looking at another Thameside habitat, wet woodland. There are two things that define a wet woodland. You there, can you tell me one? Lots of trees. Correct. A typical woodland ecosystem. You there, can you tell me another? Is it a system for structuring society around relationships derived from the holding of land in exchange for service or labour? Well, no, it's got water in it. Wet woodlands tend to contain standing water for at least part of the year, meaning they're dominated by trees that like those conditions. Primarily, that's willow, birch and alder. These trees, particularly willow, are live fast, die young species. They colonize readily, grow rapidly and veteranize quickly, collapsing in on themselves, a bit like I'm starting to feel now I'm pushing 40, creating cracks and hollows which can be easily utilized by bats and nesting birds. That said, Willow responds very well to these structural setbacks, sticking shoots up every which way when it falls or gets cut, historically making it a great tree for building materials and charcoal production. In those parts of the country where beavers have recolonized, this regenerative behavior is exploited by the animals to provide a ready supply of food and, again, building materials. In fact, it's quite likely that the depredations of this paddle-tailed, toothy water rodent are why Willow responds in this way in the first place. Oh, and these places host communities of unusual weevils and crane flies. Somehow nobody ever thinks about the crane flies. However, as the centuries passed, with charcoal burning becoming redundant and British beavers becoming hats and perfume, until recently, the willow became less useful, so a lot of land was drained for farming, and many of our wet woodlands ceased to exist, along with the benefits they bring, much like the benefits my body used to bring me before pushing 40. So what are these benefits? We're talking habitat connectivity. We're talking halt sites for otters. We're talking breeding pools for frogs. We're talking early season nectar and pollen for pollinating insects. We're talking flood prevention, bank erosion control, carbon sequestration, love that word, makes you sound proper smart, and many, many more. Along the Thames, the edges of wet woodland can provide a good site for Loddon Lily, a plant with a restricted local distribution which might have a native historic population in the area, might not, or more likely might have a bit of one with significant manual enhancement of the population by people who want to see more of a pretty plant. So keep an eye out for wet woodland when you're on the Thames side. It looks tangled, primeval, a dense, unwelcoming habitat of shattered tree stems coated in moss. Look in from the edge and know that some animals might be watching you back. There may be a woodcock hunkered down, invisible among the leaf litter, or there might be an otter tucked under a root. You'll never know for sure, but it's nice to think there could be. Crane flies are people too. The end. <laughs>